Hi again then guys, and welcome to another countdown list for the Gran Turismo series, but this particular countdown is a bit different to what we'd usually do. Usually we do top 10 fastest, or top 10 best, maybe top 15, or top 20, or even more. This list is much larger. This is a 40 vehicle countdown, but the difference is this isn't for the fastest cars, this isn't for the best cars. This is just 40 vehicles which I believe deserve to return to Gran Turismo. Now, there are far more than just 40 cars that Gran Turismo has had which arguably deserve to come back. There are cars from GT2, GT3, GT4, even GT5 that deserve to return. Most of them probably won't, unfortunately, so this list can also be viewed as kind of an appreciation list for just how cool some of the older Gran Turismo games car lists have been. And if you haven't played all of the Gran Turismo games, even some of the older ones, I would recommend checking them out because there really are some superb vehicles and features that each game has that's unique to itself. Now this particular list is only concerning Gran Turismo 2 vehicles. I would have liked to have included Gran Turismo 4 cars as well, such as the ones that you can see here in our opening, but my current capture software doesn't really capture Gran Turismo 4 properly. I can't get the aspect ratio to come out correctly, so if we fix that in the future, maybe we'll return to it. But for now, we're going to have to leave that out. So, let's get straight into it. First up we have the Nissan Almira. This is essentially the Almira Sport. It has a longer, more jargony name, but this is a vehicle which I think deserves to return purely because of the fan base that cars like this have. Next up we have the Venturi 300 by Turbo. This is essentially France's answer to stuff like the Lotus Esprit or the Ferrari F355. I personally think that Venturi cars are awesome. I really wish that they were still on Gran Turismo. And this is basically their entry level model on the game. Next up we have a race car which is very easy to forget from Gran Turismo 2, the Audi TT LM race car. As you can see from the specs, in some ways it's not as strong as the TTR DTM machine that we have now, but it's ultra lightweight and is just a really quick all-round vehicle. Next up we have a pretty historically significant car, the Monte Carlo Rally Mini. It doesn't have pure straight line speed, but it's a fantastic collector's piece that I think would go really well in Gran Turismo's current motorsports lineup. Next up, a surprising classic that we haven't seen featured on any Gran Turismo game since, the Aston Martin DB6. We no longer have any classic Aston Martins featured on Gran Turismo, and this is one of the most iconic cars that they've ever built. I think a lot of people would like to see this car return. Next up, a decidedly more mainstream option, the BMW 7 Series. The reason why I think this car deserves to return is simply because we don't have that many big luxury limos on Gran Turismo. We have super saloons, but we don't have the top level luxury machines. And BMWs are always great performance cars to work with. Gran Turismo now has far less roof models than it used to. Gran Turismo 2 had a lot of roof models available, and this is probably the most notable of all, the Roof Turbo R, which is based on the 993 series Porsche 911, and this would actually be the newest model roof were it to return. Next up, another obscure supercar from Gran Turismo's past, the Vector W8, the most famous car from the Vector brand, essentially the American equivalent of Lamborghini. And just look at this thing, of course it should come back to Gran Turismo. Next up we have another obscure race car, the Vauxhall Tigra Ice Race Car, as it's called. It's actually a Trophy Andros rally vehicle based in snow and ice racing. It's powerful, it's light, it's fast, and it would be a monster rally car were it to return to Gran Turismo. Next up, one of my personal favourite race cars from GT2, the extremely undervalued Lotus Esprit GT1. It has fantastic value considering its performance, and the Esprit is already a great car on every Gran Turismo game, so why wouldn't you want the racing version? Next up, more of a livery change rather than a full new vehicle, because of course we do still have a version of the Team Orica Viper, the red with the green headlights, but I just personally think that this blue and white version looks so much cooler. 
a decidedly slower car to return to Gran Turismo up next, the Tommy Kyra Micra-based M13. This car wouldn't really bring anything radically new to the table, but it's just cool to have an ultra-rare aftermarket tiny super mini to work with. Up next is another race car which I used to absolutely love on Gran Turismo 2, the Mitsubishi FTO race car. I don't know how to pronounce it, but Tavon Trampio FTO, fantastic paint job, extremely quick, light, and although we do have the touring car version now, this car has the advantage of being a real vehicle. Next up we have another Venturi model, this time Venturi's answer to the Ferrari F40, and I personally think it's a far cooler vehicle. It's basically the ultimate French exotic, concept cars notwithstanding. Next up, the far lesser known brother of the Jaguar XJ220, the XJR15. Visually, it looks a little bit like an Ascari Ecosse, kind of crossed with a Mosler to some degree. It's known for being extremely tricky to drive, but it's an exotic Jag. Of course we want it back. Next up, another vehicle which isn't necessarily essential, it's just a personal favourite of mine, the original Viper RT10. The main thing that I like about this car is just how much simpler it looks visually than the other Vipers. It wouldn't bring anything radically new to the table, but it's just a nice throwback. Next up, in the same vein as the BMW 7 Series, the BMW 8 Series I think definitely should return to Gran Turismo. This is one of BMW's kind of unicorn cars as far as performance vehicles go. Sure, it's big and heavy, but it's pretty cool too. Next up we have another Tommy Kyra model, this time based on the pretty popular cult classic R30 shape, Skyline. This car would be more for JDM fans in particular, but Tommy Kyras are awesome and we used to have so many more of them than we do now. Next up, probably one of the most popular cars that people would like to see return to Gran Turismo, the road going version of the Toyota GT1. It's not just a red version of the race car, it really is a completely different machine and I think it's the best looking Japanese car ever made. Now we have a personal favourite of mine, the road car version of the Lister Storm. The race car is cool, but the road car has so much more potential, and up until the Brabus Bullet came out, this was the fastest four-seater car in the world. A slightly more obscure vehicle now, called the Concept Car on Gran Turismo 2, it's actually called the Dodge Copperhead. You could turn it into a race car with a race modification, and it was designed to be a more toned down baby brother to the Viper. That concept didn't reach fruition, but it's still a fun concept car. Next up we have another Vector model, this time arguably their best looking model, the M12. Again, America's answer to Lamborghini, looks very similar to a Diablo, but in my opinion, it looks even better. Another Tommy Kyra now, the R34 based Tommy Kyra R, pretty simple name, the R34 skylines on Gran Turismo are still superb, and this is an aftermarket exotic unicorn version, what's not to like? Coming up next is the only muscle car to make it onto this list, I am a huge muscle car fan, but the GTX from Plymouth is probably the most notable muscle car that we don't have featured on Gran Turismo anymore. Another Venturi again, this time a racing model, the 600 LM. It's light, it's extremely powerful, and were it on the game now, this could give any of Gran Turismo's GT class machines a fantastic run for their money. Next up, one of my personal favourite cars from Gran Turismo 2, the absolutely awesome Lotus Elise. GT1. You could race modify it into the racing version, but in my opinion, the road car version is even cooler. This would give cars like the CLK GTR, etc., a great run around the track and in a straight line. Another easy car to forget from Gran Turismo 2, due to the fact that it was in the Ford dealership, is the Celine SR Mustang. We still have the Celine S7, but this is a racing Celine, and it would allow Celine fans, such as myself, to actually compete in that field of racing on Gran Turismo again. 
This car, of course, is still featured on Gran Turismo, the Nissan R390, but in particular, I want to see the return of the race-modified version, not the Calsonic R390 that we have now, but the black and red version with the different back end, which I personally think looks far better than the blue Calsonic version. Next up, another car that is almost totally forgotten from Gran Turismo 2. We do have the Amuse S2000 GT1s, but this is a whole nother level. This is a pure racing GT1 version of the Honda. It's lighter than the Amuse, it's as powerful as the Amuse, and it was a lot more competitive than the Amuse versions are now. Next up, another favourite of mine. I love, and I mean love, the Daihatsu Cross 4 models, and this was a very unsung hero on GT2. It's expensive, but boy, this thing could shift. It could give any of the other rally cars a great run for their money on the dirt and on the road. Next up, another one of the speed kings of Gran Turismo's past. Up until recently, we had the Speed 12 in its most dominant form. Now it feels kind of neutered. This original version, though, called the 712 back then, is the concept version. You could even race and modify it into the white and blue GT1 spec machine. Come on, of course we want this car back. Next up we have a car that was very important to me personally growing up with this game. It's the car that I always wanted to unlock, and when you finally do unlock it, it doesn't turn out to be that great, but it looks fantastic and would nonetheless make a very fun collector's piece. Next up we have a very obscure vehicle. You're probably thinking, wait a second, we have the Tomikara ZZ2. Well, yes we do, but take a look at this car again. We don't have this car. This looks completely different to the Ascari that we currently have and has totally different specs. Another more mainstream choice on the list again, this is just a car which I think we could have a lot of sleeper fun with. The Subaru Forester is essentially a jacked up Impreza and it has all the advantages going with that. Of course, the STI version would be the ideal, but even in this form, it could be a potentially very useful car to have. Another absolute speed monster on the list now, one of the quickest cars from Gran Turismo 2, the Ford GT90, supposedly capable of around 235 miles per hour in real life. Imagine what this thing could do around Route X with upgrades. Another obscure model now from GT2, the Plymouth PT Spider concept. Not a mind-blowing car in any particular way, but it's an interesting alternative to your Lotus Elises and Vauxhall VX220s. An even more obscure car than the ZZ2 is the ZZ3. This car is essentially a coupe version of the ZZS, with a slightly more aggressive front end and slightly different performance. More of a unicorn car. We return again now to Vector, but this time for the racing model. This M12 LM car would be perfect on Gran Turismo. You can just imagine this car going up against Lister Storms, XJ220 race cars, and all the rest. Another easily overshadowed model now. Not hard to see why the Escudo was a monster, and it always has been on Gran Turismo, but I personally prefer the Cultus. It's less powerful, but I personally think it looks better, it's easier to drive, and it's still ballistically quick. And finally on the list, it won't be a surprise to anyone who's familiar with my channel, the Aspas F1. This is the car which by far I want to see come back to Gran Turismo. But that's it overall for this particular list. If there are any that you would like to see return, I would love to hear about it down in the comments, and for other top 10s and top lists in general, you can subscribe down below, or check out the playlist at the end of this video. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.